Welcome to this video on prayer. In our church, we have been using the material Prayer Unlimited, which came out of Spring Harvest in 2019, to look at different ways of praying and things that can help our prayer life. This video is about a way of praying called a house of prayer. A house of prayer is a way to pray using the imagery of coming into God's house to organise our prayers. There are different rooms and different spaces in our house which we use for different purposes. They have a dedicated use and we wouldn't do some things in one room that we might do in another. In the same way, in some grand houses, there are rooms specifically dedicated to activities that we might manage simply from a cupboard in our house. But in God's house, there's plenty of space. But those spaces too can be organised in different ways. So we can look at prayer as a way of moving through God's house in different ways. In the 1950s, Leslie Weatherhead, a Methodist minister and a Christian author, produced a little book, A Personal House of Prayer. This had suggestions for each day of the month as a way of organising your prayer and making suggestions for prayer in the different rooms uh, of your house and use it as a way of imagining ourselves walking through God's house with him in prayer. In the 1980s, Bishop Maurice Maddox, the former Bishop of Selby, settled in Bath and Wells Diocese whilst he was the advisor on healing to the two archbishops. He produced a little book, A Healing House of Prayer, which used the same method but focused specifically on prayers for health and well-being and healing. So a house of prayer is a way in which we will go through different rooms, stopping to do different kinds of prayer activity within them. Within this video, we will be using uh, classic pieces, short formal prayers, different thoughts, different bits of scripture, just to give you some ideas to get you going. We certainly won't be doing 30 whole days worth of material. But that's just a starter. So within the video, there are places where we're going to suggest you pause for your own prayers and your own thoughts um, to develop the prayer life. But let's begin with the entrance into the gate of God's glory. Coming home, the phrase always gives me an inner warmth. Whether returning tired from work and looking for rest, a longing to be together as a family, or just longing for a meal. God always welcomes us into his house. He longs for us to come and spend time with him, to find refreshment for our spirits. In one sense, God is everywhere, so he's always with us. But when we come to God in prayer, we're actually making time, making space to acknowledge that presence and to give special attention to God, both from us to him and await his communication with us. When we come into God's house, as we enter it, even in our imaginations, we need to remember two almost conflicting things. The first is that God welcomes us. It's for him as if we are coming home, coming back to the God who made us and redeemed us. So we are always welcome. 
And we never need to think that God is not interested or not glad that we are spending time with him. The other thing is that, of course, our God is a great God, a God of power, a God of creation, a God of salvation and redemption, a God whose love is beyond anything we can imagine. So as we come to God in prayer, we need to remember the might, the majesty, the magnificence of the God we're coming to meet. This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Will you pray with me? We come into the presence of the one who is making us. We come into the presence of the one who is healing us. We come into the presence of the one who is guiding us. We come with love and trust. Amen. We say together, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. Welcome to the entrance hall where we leave our outdoor clobber and prepare to be at home. We hang up our heavy outdoor coats, we take off our shoes or leave our muddy boots and wet umbrellas. Some houses have a porch, some have a downstairs cloakroom or a utility room for washing things. Some large houses have a dedicated boot room just for cleaning shoes. When we come to God's house of prayer, we prepare to meet with him by casting off the dirt and stains that have spoiled our lives, release the burdens of hurt and pain put upon us by the unkindness of others. This is the place for confession and forgiveness. So to prepare ourselves for the rest of our journey through God's house, let's take time to take off all the messy things. The times we've gone wrong, the times we've said the wrong thing, the times when we've damaged or hurt others. We're going to ask God to forgive us for those things. But at the same time, we're going to ask God to help us because there are people who have hurt us, people who have damaged us and we need to forgive them as well or they will become part of the burden we carry around. So let's just pause for a moment and then we'll be led in prayer. We confess our sins together. We have not always worshipped God our Creator. Lord, have mercy. We have not always followed Christ our Saviour. Christ, have mercy. We have not always trusted in the Spirit our Guide. Lord, have mercy.
hear God's promise of forgiveness. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins, heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. This room speaks for itself. It's the library, a place full of books to read. Of course, for us as Christians, we have a complete library, 66 books, all in the one book that we call the Bible. Words that God has spoken through his people down through the ages. And so we need to read that. And the reading for the day or however you're reading the Bible, may inspire you with thoughts. It may lead you to other Christian books that can explain or inspire you in other ways. Whatever you do, our reading can lead us into thoughts that we can turn to prayers. A reading of Psalm 63. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you in a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be fully satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips my mouth will praise you. On my bed I remember you. I think of you through the watches of the night. Because you are my help, I sing in the shadow of your wings. I cling to you. Your right hand upholds me. Those who want to kill me will be destroyed. They will go down to the depths of the earth. They will be given over to the sword and become food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All who swear by God will glory in him, while the mouths of liars will be silenced. Reflect a little bit on the passage. Ask yourself some questions. What sort of relationship does the psalmist have with God? How does the psalmist's experience compare to your own? How does the psalmist react to times of trouble? Is the psalm a comfort or a challenge for your prayer life? And do your reflections lead you to pray? You'll get a standard 15 second pause after this, but you might like to take a bit longer and pause the video and just think a bit more about what you've read or heard. Welcome to the music room. Music touches more than our emotions. It touches our spirits as well. Singing God's praises is a healing activity. So in the music room we can lift our praise and thanksgiving to God. 
You can play your musical instrument if you have one or sing out loud. Our musical offerings are also part of our prayer life with God. Join us now in a music room interlude.
We all need a place where we can relax, get away from it all, have a time of quiet to ourselves. Um, maybe in your house you haven't got a special place where that can happen, but maybe there's a special time, time when you can be quiet. It might be the hour after the children have finally gone to sleep. When we come to God's house, then we need to be finding that quiet room. When we come to God, we have so much to say that we tend to babble, don't we? And um, we just go on. We need to take time to be quiet before God for two reasons. The first is that we need to listen to what God may want to say to us. The other is just to enjoy being in God's presence, just being together. John Burkitt tells the story of sitting in church, um, just getting ready for the service and quietly praying, when his wife Julie came and sat down beside him. And he knew it was Julie without opening his eyes. And he was just content to sit there. They just held hands and were aware of each other's presence and just enjoying each other's silent company. With God, we can take that time. It's a bit like a, a conservatory or a sunroom. We can bask in God's sunshine. Silence enables us to be aware of God, to let prayer be listening before it is talking, to let mind and imagination dwell upon his presence. Teach me, my God and King, in all things thee to see, and what I do in anything, to do it as for thee. Drop thy still dews of quietness, till all our striving cease. Take from our souls the strain and stress, and let our ordered lives confess the beauty of thy peace. Let us be silent. Let us be still, empty, in the presence, saying nothing, asking nothing, being silent, being still. Welcome to the living room. This is the place where everything happens, where we meet our friends, where the family gathers, where we can play and relax, uh, where we get the news from around the world, whether that's newspapers or computer or television. It's the place where the whole family can be, a place where we can care for one another's needs as well as our own. This is the room in God's house of prayer where we do our intercessions. Let us pray together. Please use the responses that appear in yellow. O oh God, you are the maker and sustainer of all mankind and know the frailty of our human life. We pray for people of every race and in every kind of need. May your compassion go out to all, especially in the time of this new pandemic. We pray for those who are sick and in pain, those who mourn, 
those who are fearful or lonely, and those called upon to live courageously in the face of danger. Give them all peace of heart, serenity of mind, and hope in their spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Yet, O oh Lord, we know many suffer in other ways as a result of human sinfulness, whether by direct action or by neglect of your world. We pray for the hungry, the thirsty, and those caught up in hatred and violence. We pray for those who selflessly seek to relieve their suffering. Show your boundless mercy and wisdom to those who lead the nations and raise up people who can promote peace and justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church throughout the world. Guard us and guide us by your Holy Spirit, that those who profess themselves Christians may be led in the way of truth and the unity of the Spirit. We pray especially for those who are persecuted for their faith. Give them patience and bring good from their troubles. Show us how we are to live as your church and proclaim your love at this time and strengthen our compassion with the power of your great love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray now for those who are close to our own hearts and mention their names and their need in the silence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Grant your grace to each of us as we bring our situation and our personal concerns to you now. Now let us say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. So we come to the door into the world. In one sense, we've never left the world. We are part of it. But having come apart for a while to be with Jesus, we are to go out, renewed in our understanding of his will, strengthened to serve in his world. It is spring and the world is full of new possibilities after a damp and dreary winter. So let us prepare to go out in his name with his blessing that all we meet may take note that we are ordinary people who have been with Jesus. Would you like to pray with me? May my conversations be significant. May my meetings be blessed. May my path cross the paths of others who love you. May my path cross the paths of others who don't know you. May my touch be your touch of infinite gentleness. 
May my words be your words of wisdom. Amen. Christ be with me, Christ within me, Christ behind me, Christ before me, Christ beside me, Christ to win me, Christ to comfort and restore me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ in quiet and in danger, Christ in hearts of all that love me, Christ in mouth of friend and stranger. Amen. So we've come to the end of our journey through this house of prayer. It's been a process. We began with recognising that we're coming into the glorious presence of God when we come to prayer. The entrance hall was an opportunity to prepare ourselves properly to meet with God. The library was a place of study and reflection. The music room an opportunity to praise God for all his goodness and his glory. The quiet room, a place to listen to God and what God might be saying to us. And the living room, a recognition of the needs of the world we live in, whether that's close by or far away in our time of intercessions. And then in the door to the world, we ask God to be with us as we go out to live out his life and his love amongst those we meet. This has been a way of organising our prayers uh, to give them some sort of structure but it's one that seems appropriate perhaps to our current situation where we're spending so much time at home. We've used general prayers and quotations that aren't meant to be prescriptive. You may want to use your own words in each section, that's the idea that each time you come to pray to God, it's different. If you're not happy with just praying your own words, use other resources. There are books of prayers that you may have, or you can go on the web. The Church of England website in particular has lots of ideas for prayers. You may want to move around your house and uh, go into the different parts of your house that are mentioned in this way of prayer or you might just like to sit still and imagine yourself moving through God's house of prayer. Feel free to experiment. There are places in your home we haven't touched. You might like to try out in the kitchen using Brother Lawrence's idea of practicing the presence of God amongst the noisy pots and pans as he did in the Abbey kitchen. Or you might like to use the dining table as you contemplate the meaning of the Lord's Supper, of Jesus being present with us in that special way. It's not meant to be a straitjacket, rather a launching into a journey of prayer with God. We hope you find this video useful and we think that it will be part of an occasional series. So look out for other ideas on the web as we seek to uh, develop our prayer life. Thank you for watching.